Hi guys, it's Gordy Ross again. Uh, hi to everybody on the KLR forum. Okay, so I got the sleeve knocked out of this KLR650 jug. And um, I just got off the phone with Chinets, and what they told me was that anywhere it gets close to the water jacket, it's got to have at least 20 thousandths clearance. So there are some places like here where it doesn't. And it's kind of close all over the place because the old sleeve is smaller. So I will, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it and I'm going to stick it in my lathe and turn the inside of it. So I will get that set up. Okay, so it's set up in here now. What I did was the inner, not, not the first step where the sleeve is, but the inner register right there is where I'm holding it. And then I've got it butted up against the three jaw. You can do this in a three jaw if any of you are machinists, you'll understand because it's not that critical. All it is is clearance, so I'm not like changing any of the registers or anything. I don't have it gripped real hard because it's not, you know, this. All you're going to be doing is skim cutting out of here. And I've got some aluminum inserts called, uh, I think they're called AK inserts or whatever they are. Um, the the tool pressure is very low so I can get in here and and bore back this way and be fine so on to the next step okay we're set up to bore here and I have angled the boring bar it's not straight with the bore it's angled and my reasoning for that is to give me a little bit of an angle at the front I could probably give it more I may um, but it'll give it more of a back angle at the back so that it's not brushing up against this Flip right here as much so I can get closer to it without actually intruding upon it. So, yeah, that's that far. This is the aluminum insert I was talking about. It's very, very sharp. No good for cutting steel, but great for cutting aluminum. And uh, my only shortcoming, uh, something I may run into, is um, this the boss for the back of this down in the water jacket. There's actually a dimple in there. And uh, it sticks out kind of farther than everything else, so if I start hitting that before I hit anything else and I haven't gotten clearance on anything else, I'm just going to ignore it. Even if I do punch through this, I can just weld it up. And the, all this does is, is hold the little tab on the oil pipe on the back of the cylinder head, so it has a nothing job. I mean, you know, it, it could might as well not even be there. But um, worst comes to worst, I can heel coil this and... and it can be a lot shorter and not not worry about it pulling out or anything. Um, there is another boss for the um, for this bolt, which can also basically be it's not the cam chain tensioner, so it, it can be welded up to. If I think I'm remember, yeah, yeah. There's one there. The ones for the uh, well, of course the cam chain tensioner don't hit because they're not in the water jacket. But anyway, this one and which is the oil pipe bolt and the one for the radiator hose are the ones that you have to watch out for but um, I, I don't see myself getting into them that far because it's not that big a deal anyway so yeah I will start chewing on this thing and hopefully everything works okay got it set up uh, my dad's been nice enough to hold the camera for me um, we're running at 225 RPM. My feed rate is... Five thousandths per revolution, give or take. And, um, here goes nothing. see it but I just touched so there it is going okay so it's out of the lathe now um I was gonna go until I had a clean cut all the way around on all the high spots but um like there's a little bit there where it didn't quite touch and there's a little bit here where it didn't quite touch but the rest of the way around it um did just fine so, 
You can see the little shadow mark where I had to use a backwards boring bar to get in there to cut back to without doing two setups, which is kind of ridiculous for this. But anyway, it's got give or take, oh, probably sixteenth of an inch worth of clearance around it, maybe a little more. Um, no, I'd say it's a sixteenth. You can see right there where it cut out to. And um, that should be more than adequate. And I didn't punch through anywhere. And see, there's the cam chain. I mean, the oil pipe banjo bolt. And there's the water jacket. I mean, the heater hose fitting. So, turned out really well. Now on to cleaning it up and putting the new sleeve in it. Okay. Okay, one other thing I did was these holes right here had some really, really rough edges around them, and I did my best. It's hard to see. But I did my best to clean them off so that it wasn't making the water cavitate in the jacket. So that's just something else I did as a nicety, I guess. I mean, it's not totally necessary, but I can't see how it would hurt, so I just went ahead and did it. Okay, so here's the new sleeve. Here's the old sleeve. A little bit better, I would say. And it's not filthy. Um, the old O-rings, they send you new ones, and the old ones are... The antifreezes made them all nasty. They're not very pliable anymore. So, they send you new ones, and I first thought this was a bunch of little O-rings, and it was kind of like, hey, no fair, how the heck am I supposed to use this? Anyway, you take it out, and I don't know why they just don't put it in a package like that, like most of them, but anyway. So, there's one in there, there are two, so, it's kind of hard to do with one hand, anyway. Anyway, you, you see what's going on. So, yeah, you, just a second. Anyway, yeah, there it is, in there. You just take it and just work it around it. It flops in by itself. It, even though it looks all funny when you take it out, it, it will lay in there really nicely. I didn't have to work very hard at all to put that in there. So, now it's put this in the freezer time. I cleaned this with brake cleaner and kept scrubbing it with a rag until it didn't come up like this anymore. Because there is cast iron dust in the pores of this. So you got to make sure it's clean, 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 and this is too, before you put it back together. So I've washed out both of them. And now, so the plan is, what I normally do is, I put the sleeve in the freezer, I just lay it in the ice tray, and all the ice will stick to it and everything, you got to break it off or whatever, but it's not that bad. But anyway, that, that'll get it down to freezing temperature really quick. And then this, I put it in the oven. And I put it at 400 degrees for 15 minutes, and it's probably 10 minutes will, will usually do it. It's just on something like this, I want to make sure that it's expanded all the way. So 400 degrees for 10 minutes was probably okay. I'm going to leave it in for 15. So at 15 minutes, I'll take the sleeve out of the freezer, set it down like this, take the jug, put it like this, and it should just go wham and fall down on there. If not, I will have a hammer handy to tap it the rest of the way in. But... The laws of physics being on my side, it should work. It has other times I've done this, it just falls right on there. And then once these both come back up to room temperature, they're stuck. Uh, hoping these O-rings don't give me any problems. Okay, got the oven heating up. What I normally do is I just put the jug or cylinder or whatever I'm heating up, I put it in there with the oven off and then turn the oven on and preheat it so that it doesn't heat up that fast. So, um, got my nice board down here so I don't mark up the floor and cats supervising and a big pair of welding gloves and the jug is in there cooling off I mean heating up and sleeves in here cooling off and I just took it and put it in the ice cube tray and packed full ice cubes so that will cool it right off it's already chilly so um, even if this thing, I can't get all the ice cubes broken off the outside of it, if you get the big pieces off, as soon as you touch it to that cylinder, the ice will just flash to steam, so it's not that big a deal. Anyway, so, while the 
jug is heating up, the cylinder is cooling off, and I'll probably have to take that out of there and break the ice cubes out of it. I won't show it doing that. I mean, you can break ice cubes out of something. Okay. Wrong now? No. Yeah, it is. It. Oh, okay. Anyway. Okay, so, here we are. Cylinder's been in there for 15 minutes. Jug's still in the freezer. First step is make sure the jug doesn't have any big pieces of ice still stuck to it. I can do that with my bare hands because it's not dry ice. It's not that cold. And, of course, it's stuck. Again. There, what? There aren't any real big pieces on the outside. Well, there are. Gotta kind of be careful how long expand back but this is a big piece of metal so it's not going to okay no real big pieces and the rest will like I said evaporate so that's good to go just put there and with a little bit of luck this will just drop right on decking machine at the local automotive shop so yeah gotta be deck square because the sleeve does protrude so here it is in the middle of a cut that sleeve is harder than the hinges of hell more on this later okay so got it back from getting it decked um pretty darn smooth surface finish that sleeve is really hard so it was hard to get it to jive with this soft aluminum so yeah with that um, anyway so now time to bore it so I'm using my 1970 something quick way boring bar and uh, this is a motorcycle boring bar so it's got its own little fixture and everything and um, hopefully my cutter will cut it I may have to end up getting a CBN insert for the boring bar because that sleeve is really hard and I gotta take a bunch of material out of it anyway I'm gonna set it up and show you how that's done okay kind of go into the specifics of this here uh, I've this bar floats on here when you've got this loose so the way I do it is I set it up so that it's pretty straight here and pretty lined up here um, it may be a little bit forward but anyway um, you can get under it, it's no big deal. Anyway, so then this goes in here and it's got two big parallels on the bottom. And then you put these parallels on top of it. But the first step is getting it centered. And you do that with these, these little bar things. They, um, they go in here. And there are three of them. So it's like a three-point centering system. And you use this big knob on the top to crank it in. So I'm going to see if that will go down in there. may not go big enough. In which case, I'm going to have to figure something else out because that is no bueno. Now we're down in the bore. I don't know if you can see that very well. Anyway, 
area down in the, oh, you can't see it. You can kind of, yeah, there you can see it. Okay, yeah. Now what you do is you take this thing and tighten it. And those things start moving. And you go till they pinch. And then I just do it lightly. And then go back and take these and push them in. And then take these. Make sure they're absolutely clean. These are kind of boogered, but it it works. Anyway. Put that one there. You put it I'm going to have to take a lot out of here, so I'm going to put them kind of far away. And you put them as close to square as you can. Okay, there's that. Now, because we've got it sort of centered in here, you take this thing and that moves this up so there we go now it's pinched go ahead and rank it down pretty tight and then you take this that's now centered you take this and you loosen it Okay, it's loose. And you take this and you don't kill it, but tighten it up pretty snug. And you take this, tighten it back up. Again, don't monkey wrench this and don't use any bigger wrench than this. They tell you not to use anything bigger than this because you'll leave a dent in this little track here and then you're really screwed. Okay, so then. You retract this thing. You take it and Okay, and you run this up, this handle, and you pull these things back out. Let's hear from one of the patients that is uh, experiencing treatment down at St. Jude. This okay. Is from Lafayette, Louisiana. There's right that. Brain tooth. When we found out that I had a tumor in me. Yeah, I'm sorry. They're playing terrible kids with cancer things on the radio. Um, okay. So, now on to setting it up to bore. Now, usually with smaller most motorcycle cylinders I use this one but I'm going to take this insert out with this screw make sure there are two holding it in and then put it in the bigger holder for larger bores because I think this thing will bore up to four six hundred and then it's got a little spring loaded thing on the back which I will have to move probably and then get to boring okay well here it is cutting the carbide seems to cut through it just fine um, I don't know why the CBN was having so much trouble. I mean, I have CBN, and it usually never complains about stuff that's cast iron. But um, anyway, it's cutting. I mean, I'll be here for a while because i got to cut a, probably 100,000 out of the thing still. But um, anyway, yep.